Hello and welcome to another video by myself, Chris, from Surrey on a Budget. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a, a gallery review. Um, easy for me to say, I almost messed that up right off the start, but I'm going to leave that in. Um, a gallery review. Let's see if we could keep that, uh, that tongue twister going. I didn't think that was going to be a different one to say. Anyhow, um, in today's video, I'm going to be looking at um, a, just a little overview of where my gallery is, where I'm at with it all. Um, recent ins and outs um, and my plans moving forward over the next few weeks. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you could press the subscribe button below, that'd be fantastic. Um, if you're new to Surreal and you want to get involved, um, you can do so on my link on the screen. It'll be in the description below, which is surreironabudget.com. That'll take you to the Surreal website where you'll get your, uh, when you sign up, you'll get your 10 free common cards that you can use in the Casual League. And then you'll subsequently get a free card when you buy five cards from the new card auctions. So um, today's pictures that I've got on the side here, we have um, my three teams that I'm kind of, looking at certainly two for this week um, and the J-League lads will be for next, but I'll, I'll kind of come into those um, as the video goes on, but I'm very excited the fact that the the uh, the game week window for the weekend has literally just opened, so I'm going to uh, sort my squads um, at the same time there. And uh, yeah, so let's see how we got on. So first and foremost, I'm going to load into um, Surreal Data and just have a wee look at where we're at. So I had a big sale yesterday. Um, I'd sold Tiago Santana. Um, I had him listed, and I had him listed at what I thought was a, a crazy price. Um, I had him listed at 0.25. There had been other ones sitting about 0.22. Um, I wasn't in any great rush to sell him, but if he sold, he sold, and that's exactly what happened yesterday. So um, on the back of that, um, I've signed another uh, forward for the J League. Um, maybe not as prolific, but I've certainly got another one in there. And in addition to that, I've also picked up a, a challenger midfielder that I was really wanting. And I've now got, um, I've just had another wee withdrawal as well. So the, the state of play, I posted it just on Facebook just before I recorded this video. So as you'll probably know, if you're new to the channel, you won't know, but um, long time viewers will know, I started with a £300 deposit on the 31st of March uh, 2021 and um, we're about a month and a bit shy of that just now about a month and a half shy and it's currently sitting uh, I've withdrawn 2,070 pounds and in addition to that as you can see on the screen here the gallery at the moment were 3.33 ETH um, which um, going by Surya Data's value is uh, uh, 7,341 now um, the way I'm kind of looking at it at the moment, all, uh, the way that everybody should really look at it, your gallery value is purely paper money until you've actually withdrawn it, um, sold the gallery, withdrawn your money. Um, it is literally that. It's a, it's a virtual number. Um, it's an investment money. Whichever way you want to look at it, you know, it's money you're, you know, you've got in your gallery. Um, but until you withdraw that, I mean, as we know, the market's very volatile. You can have a player that could Terry's cruciate and he's out for a year and suddenly your 500 pound player is worth 40 quid you know so there are there's a lot of factors in that but as a, as a snapshot it's quite good to have a little look at um i'm just going to double check exactly where we are on that one let's have a look at ETH to gbp because i look at this graph quite a lot it has dropped a little bit today three oops 3.33 it's actually just over seven and a half grand, um, almost seven six, which when you add in the, uh, the 2070, it's getting over 10,000 pounds from 300 quid a year ago. Um, and it's it still baffles me that this even has been a thing when, as I've said in the other videos, when uh, Russell Scotland Surreal, at Scotland Surreal on Twitter. Um, give him a follow. He's also on YouTube as well. Um, give him a wee search there. I'll try and tag him in the video below as well. So, um, yeah, he he got me involved. And it was, I, again, as I've said some, I did, I did subscribe to, you know, sign up just to pacify him because he was going on about it and on about it and on about it and how, how this was a great new thing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, you know, I'd... I'd kind of seen some of the other things and wasn't, you know, that keen. Um, but Surreal is obviously a different animal from the likes of, you know, the other products we won't mention. <laughs> and um, 
yeah, I mean, it was, it's been quite a journey. Lots of ups and downs. They're documented. I'm not going to go through them all. If you want to see that, you can go watch some of the older videos. Um, but there's been lots of ups and downs. But the one key thing that has stuck with it the whole way through has been a lot of hard work. I mean, I'm, I'm on it all the time. <laughs> um, but also lots of research. You know, do your own research. Even these videos that I do, anybody else does. Don't take it as gospel. Go and do your own research on any of the players because at the end of the day, when you buy those players, you're buying them with your money, not mine. So, um, yeah, do your own research and trying to find, you know, the, the players that are, the, you know, the best fit for you and for your club. Um, but, yeah, lots of research. I'm backing myself, trusting in what I'm, you know, buying. Not everyone's a winner. Um, sometimes there, you know, you, you do have losses in amongst that, you know. Um, you know, you buy a player and it just doesn't work out for whatever reason. Nature of the beast. Um, but it's more victories than losses. If you do your research, you know, you will you will get the rewards for it. Um and yeah, so that's that's basically where the you know the gallery has been at. Um, in terms of the structure of the gallery, um, as you can see, I've got a, quite a, quite midfield heavy at the moment. Um, I'm I'm not too concerned about it. I can maybe do with dropping one midfielder and getting a defender in, but um, I'll see how that goes as the as the season progresses. So I'm going to just go over to my gallery just now, and I'll have a little look at um some of the squads. In fact, do you know what I'll do? Let's go straight into the game week and we will put in the, uh, oops, I clicked on the, uh, clicked on completely the wrong thing. Balls, let's go back to the start. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, usually this is all done on my phone. I don't really use the laptop other than doing for these videos. I'm in a bit of football manager from now and again. So, editing the team. I'm going to have to select on the used ones, and this is just a great site to see rare keepers with uh, games against them. <laughs> so I'm going to go, um, the all-star team, I am going to go with uh, Radlinger in the goal. And defensively, I am going with Juris Fensen. And then midfield-wise, I have selected... Sorry. Tokus, I'm also going to go with now. This is this is where I've got a dilemma. I'm I'm kind of swithering. I'm Jordy Bruins, one of my favourite cards that I hold, but because I am having to use um, Pojan Palo, I'm tempted to go with a stack. I'm tempted to go with Baldrin and Pojan Palo. And um, Baldrin's been really consistent, 54 average, and I think he scored 57 at the weekend there. He, I picked him up as a late addition. I needed an extra midfielder for um for the the game week at the weekend, and I picked him up and he didn't do me but it didn't do me wrong. Pojan Palo did <laughs> three big missed chances. Um, he still got 36 points, so um, it wasn't the end of the world, but um. Yeah, that's. I'm in a dilemma whether I'm playing. Uh, talk, uh, Dorican, I'm playing anyway. He's extremely reliable. Last three games have been 60, 65, and 75, I think. It's the three scores that he's had in the last few games. So he is sitting in there, and it's whether I play Baldwin or whether I play Bruin. Um, have a hear feedback on that, to be honest, whether you think I should swap Bruin in. I mean, obviously he did go off injured, and that's the one thing that's playing in my mind as to whether I just, you know, stick with this as I'm as I see it and and move on. Um Captain say this is going to change. Um, I'm gonna to have to decide on the on the captain. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with Tacos just on the basis of his last three scores being really good. They are playing um second placed uh side, is it? Yeah, they're playing Konya Spar. So they're second, it's first against second. So a defensive midfielder in those games is probably going to, you know, be quite a quite a reliable uh score, I would hope or imagine. So that is the lineup for there. And in addition to that, we're going to be going into Challenger Europe um for the first time with a really you know heavy, heavy squad. So I'm going with uh Sieben Handel. And I'm going with Dante. Now, I know Dante could be erratic. He could get good scores, he could get bad scores, but all fullbacks are like that. The, the, the 
minus one for every you know lost possession is really really harsh for the defenders, um, and especially the wingers or the or the, the white uh, defenders, um, seem to get a lot more of that than others. But um, it's what I'm going with. Um, you know he, what, what was it? Delboy said, "He who dares, he who dares." Um, I know that's for the SAS as well, but we'll go with. Uh, We'll go with Delboy. So I'm going with Stefan Nuts. He's um, one of the uh, key players that I'm looking at this. And I, I still find him very, very cheap on the market, to be perfectly honest. Um, but he gets a lot of decisives. So he's getting the captaincy, um, I believe. Let me see who it is they're playing against again. Um, yeah, they're playing against Wolfsburg, so maybe not. It'll maybe be either... Yeah, do you know what? It's going to be Tadic. I'm going to go with Tadic. I might swap that to, to Jürgen Heil because um, he's been pretty good in pre uh, well, they say pre-season in the friendlies, warming back up to the start of the season again. Um, Sieben Handel and Dante are playing against Tyrrell. That could be an option as well for um, one of those two. But I think I'm going to go with Tadic. Um, Admira right down at the bottom end of the table um, and, you know, Hartberg um, are doing not too badly. I think they just got to the semi-final of the Austrian Cup as well. So that's going to be the two lineups. And I have been waiting for this game week for two months, you know, since uh, I mean, I picked up the goalkeepers back in December, I believe it was. And I, I picked them up then because their prices were so low. Um, and I say so low, I mean, the, the, realistically, it's not low. Um but let's go into the, I'll, I'll set the rest of the training squads and such like, and the common whales, I need to get the common whales in. Um, it would be really good if uh, this stuff would move at the bottom of my screen. There we go. So these are the recent additions to the gallery. I'm just going to set it just to the rare, the rare players. Uh, no point looking at the comments. So um, a couple of hours ago, or as you can see, three hours ago, I picked up Douglas Vieira. He was a pickup I had last year and injury plagued would be an understatement. But when he did come back to the squad, he did get quite a few goals um, at the end of the season. So I think he finished the season with only 19 appearances and not far from all of them were as starts. Um, but he did get six goals. So um, I picked him up. 0.05, I didn't think that was a bad price to have as a backup forward sitting there. If he does get the starts, as um, I believe it was the, the, the Gamba blog and um, Surya Sur Japan, both had him in the in the starting lineups. If he keeps fit and you know stays away from injury, um, I'd expect to actually make quite a bit of profit on him, to be perfectly honest, but I can also um, get a fair bit of reward back. Jurgen Heil, that was to link up with uh, Tadic. He's been actually pretty decent. Um, so, again, in terms of getting assists and uh, and Tadic getting the goals, I mean, you know, I've, I've had it before with the, when I had the Champion America team and I had the connections with San Jose. So it does, it does pay dividends. It can also, you know, be, you know, doom and gloom if they're getting a hiding, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, Daiki Sugar, um, I had him before. Now he plays as a left uh, left back. Uh, I'm just going to get a quick drink for any of the the you know the English rugby fans. We'll just have a wee drink out of success. The sweet taste of success. I don't even follow rugby. My my missus does, but I don't. But still, apparently Scotland get battered everywhere we go. So, um, Daiki Sugar I had him before. I um, picked him back up. Quite expensive pickup, um, but. His scores were very comparable to their centre forward, uh, Ogashiwa. Now, the reason that I've went with Sugar was just I, I couldn't justify 600 quid on a striker. Um, I mean, it's twice my starting budget. I always have to try and bring myself back at, you know, in a perspective sometimes as to be like, you know, um, what's, what's the right thing to do? So he does get decent scores. You know, he's fairly reliable in terms of getting a 45 or so. But uh, with Chanath that being away as well, there's a chance he'll get pushed further forward. Um, so I'm quite content with picking him up at that at that price. Um, Simon Jukerlud, uh, I, I did a, a trade to pick him up. He's just come back from long-term injury. Um, so I'm hopeful that that could be, uh, you know, end up being rewarding. I've got them listed. I've got them listed way above the minimum on the market, just in case somebody wants to buy them. You know, if, and if somebody does, then happy days. It's the same with Jurgen Heil, listed way above market because I'm not interested in particularly selling them at this moment. 
I, Rick Baldron, I picked him up, as I say, uh, just before the game week last week. And Tadic, I picked up in uh, the auctions. Um, it was the start of last week, I think maybe even last Monday, actually. So um, I, I'm very happy with those those cards that I've picked up recently. I've got a few cards that, you know, I've actually, I think I've only really got two that I'm classing as um, my ones that I would happily trade out. And that was uh, Zuckerlund and uh, Bickfalvy. I do think Bickfalvy is actually going to increase in price before the game week um, in a couple of weeks' time. So I might revise that now that I've kind of got things set and I don't need an urgent purchase or anything like that. I'm, I'm actually sitting, I think where my video sits, you can't actually see it, but my guy, I'm sitting with zero ETH because I just did a withdrawal for 110 quid. Um, so I don't need to, uh, I don't need to go make a purchase of a player at the moment. And if I did, I could look at, you know, maybe dropping his price, but I think I might actually take him off the market just now. Stefan Nuts, um, Jay Chapman, <laughs> Christ, Dundee are awful. I mean, I've got my Dundee top on just now, but good God, we're awful. Um, yeah, um, but he, th there's no way he doesn't get some game time soon because, I mean, we are genuinely that bad that we, I reckon I could get a game for them at 40 years old. So we need to, we need, uh, I mean, once we're manager, for manager bucks the ideas up or, or leaves or get sacked, that could be a pro progress. But um, yeah, Amadou Dante, um, again, under 23 as well. So I've actually got quite a few under 23s. So there might be weeks where I might decide, I don't, I've only got an under 23 common goalkeeper. So I don't think necessarily that it's going to be worthwhile looking at, you know, forming a team. But I do have ways that I could do that. I mean, I could put Bates into one of the teams. I could put Dante into an under 23 team. I could put Koyamatsu into... Um, the Asia team and take out uh, Kaneko. I could play Vieira and drop, you know, so that uh, and drop uh, Sugar. So I could have, I could have an under twenty three team to run alongside those as well. But it would be with a common goalkeeper, and there's no way um, I I can afford to get uh, an under twenty three keeper. Uh, you know, just isn't so. Um, let's take a punt on Le Jolie and hope that he gets a he gets a start. But I don't I, I don't foresee me you know, any time in the, the, the near future. And then it's just going down to the same players that have been sitting in the gallery for a couple of months, as I say. Um, but the prices have gone nuts. I mean, there's like the two goalkeepers, um, Radlinger, I'm um, sitting at a grand. I paid 600 quid. And uh, Seaman Handel sitting at 1,100 quid. Again, I paid 710, I think it was. So um, I did turn down just shy of a grand from, uh, which I was really question myself on um but then I had, you have to go and look at the market and see right okay what can i get to replace them with um stern are second in the league um you know even looking towards next season um if they're second in the league there's a good chance they're going to be in european competition so i'm you know i'm, I'm not in any great rush if i can't replace them with equal or better is it, is it worth selling? And I don't think so at the moment. So, um, yep, going down the squad, a few players that I haven't actually got in the lineups there for the two. So I've got Bruin that isn't in the lineup. I've got Bates that isn't in the lineup. Scottish teams, it's Scottish Cup weekend, so there's no Scottish uh, league games. Uh, Christian Ramirez. Um, so I've got three expensive and solid uh, backups there that I could, I could put in. I've also got Chapman there as well. I mean, hopefully he gets a run of games soon. But, I mean, you're looking at three cards there that are worth what? almost half an ETH between them. Um, not far off half an ETH for, for three backups. Um, so that might be something, again, down the line that I look at and decide, right, okay, is it worth me selling these down and trading them, you know, and, and, and buying some cheaper ones to hopefully, you know, accumulate profits off of those. So again, that's that's something to, something to consider. It's not something I'm considering right now because I, my main aim is to really try and, you know, look to get um get start winning some cards um instead of just looking at winning ETH. And that's why I've gone kind of you know balls deep in trying to buy some of these players and I have spent quite a fair quite a fair chunk on them. Um so it's you know I had somebody actually in the DMs I should I was gonna mention it on Twitter. I'll mention it on Twitter at some point. Um but somebody kind of <laughs> just basically try to take me to task for buying players that are you know a lot more expensive when I'm supposed to be sitting there on a budget and my answer to that is go fuck yourself to be perfectly honest but it's my money i'll do what i like with it but um i have genuinely built this from 300 quid so uh you know it's all relative I, you know i think i said on the Serer podcast when i was on that a year ago um you know what is a budget budget's 
relative to everyone. You know, it's it doesn't mean you know a budget buy for Liverpool is buying somebody for twelve million. A budget buy for my club is finding somebody on the free transfer market or stretching to fifty grand. So a budget's relative to you know to your your situation. So um, I'm spending you know what is you know silly money is uh, at the moment I am on these cards, but. I'm still accumulating, um, and I'm ca- I, you know I have tried to cap it at six and a half. And the only reason I haven't taken any more out just now is I want to see where I go in the next few weeks with these squads and decide right. Okay, I'm very comfortable with these. These are the players I can look to sell, and that's where I'll take out the extra money to bring it down to you know in that kind of six and a half to seven grand range. I think being up this high is a wee bit too high uh, for me. You know, as I say, my budget, I'll decide what I do with it. Um, but that's where um that's where it's at at the moment. And um I'm quite excited about it. You know, like I say, I've, we've got um we've got the baby coming in the summer. So I, I that's another reason I'm gonna I'm I'm I've capped the gallery and I'm trying to work within um and I want to you know be withdrawing on a regular basis. Any cards that I win, I want to be, you know, if it's somebody that I could use, whoever I'm replacing that card with. Um, I will sell that other card and I'll withdraw the money. Um, and I want to start to accumulate the threshold payments and then start you know, to withdraw that rather than being like, oh, I can maybe put that to that and buy somebody. No, I, I need to, you know, our goal is Louise wants to take the full year off, um, which is going to, you know, which I'm 100% in support of. Um, and I, I don't want to be in a situation where we're having to, you know, not rob Peter to pay Paul, but just, you know, try to scrimp and save and what have you to get, I don't want to just get by. And the platform here is allowing me not to just get by. So if I play my strategy, my game, and try to withdraw as I go and put that money into my savings account, um, I want to, by the time we get to the baby being here in July, to have six months worth of rent payments that I could just go to the landlord and say, right, there's six months. We don't have to worry about, you know, a, a substantial payment every month. Um, you know, and even potentially if we can get beyond that, look to, you know, we've only got a year left on our car, for example. So is it worth having a look to see if we can pay that off as well? So the fact that this is actually making a real life impact to me um, is why I, you know, I'll do what I do with the gallery. Everything's all well thought out. It's all, you know, within a strategy. And, um, you know, yeah, my brand or my username or whatever way you want to call it. I mean, the Serena on the budget is now what, you know, what I'm, my account's known as and it's not going to change. So, um, yeah, if you want to take me to task for not buying 10 and 20 pound players, cool. Um, I don't really care. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, there's one other thing, and I've saved this to last. I'm going to put this in the comment and uh, that this is coming up towards the end. Um, so I made a little mention and I'm going to make a specific video to this, but I'm going to put this up just now because I'm um, happy days. So I did the uh, the giveaway a couple of weeks ago that uh, Alex won, um, which was for one of the premium boxes from uh, Mystic Jerseys. So um, full disclosure, I paid for it. I didn't get it free. I paid for the, I paid for that. Um, and on the back of that, um, I've been speaking to the guys at Mystic Jerseys and I have been given a, uh, a, a promo code, which we can use uh, for all of our followers. Um, when you go to the checkout, if, let's say, let's go and just quickly buy, uh, or I'm not going to actually buy it just now because my funds are tied up. But let's go with... Goalkeeper one. I don't know. That sounds cool. So uh large for me, not because of height, just because of being a bus driver. Um, so if I add that to the cart, and then when we get to the checkout, and um, where is our code uh, products proceed to checkout? There we go. You can tell I don't do online shopping very much. It's usually the missus that does the online shopping. Um, but we have a code which is budget. 22 if you apply that at checkout you get a 10% discount so um, I'm quite pleased to have our own um, exclusive discount code um, budget 22 and um, I'll be working with the guys in terms of get, doing a few giveaways over the course of the year as well which is um, awesome and um, I'm really looking forward to um, you know 
seeing what jerseys, if people do make orders, tag me in them, tag Mystic Jerseys in them, and let's see what you get. Um, I'm going to be placing an order um, at the weekend just before I go away to Spain, which I can't wait for either. And, um, oh yeah, that was that was paid for by Serena as well. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, uh, if uh, I'll stick to doing what I do with my gallery. Thanks very much. So, um, yeah, so if you do buy any, um, post them up. I'll post up these ones. Um, I had the video from Alex as well. Um, the video posted up on his Twitter page was in a couple of parts. Um, I've got the full video. I've downloaded it. I couldn't get it to embed in the uh, PowerPoint. I'll need to figure out a wee bit more about that um, and take that from there. But on the whole, I mean, I'm very, very happy with where everything's been at in terms of where the gallery and where things are going. And I'm... Um, as I say, I mean, moving forward, I just really want to start taking, you know, the some of the cream off the top and putting it in the savings, and it's there, you know, so that we can, you know, I can't pay my rent in ETH, unfortunately, um, but I can certainly, you know, be taking that profit out and and getting in a situation where we could pay that off um, without having to come out any of these wage, and I think that will make a, a massive difference to, to our standard of living and our, uh, you know, where we're at for the next. Uh, Oh God, it's not just going to be the next year. I think uh, simply Alex just posted on about um, you know being <laughs> working within the budget and kind of being quite restrained with it, um, and said you know maybe he needs to get a kid. I was like you know you're probably better off buying a super rare Holland because it'll probably be cheaper than uh, having a kid. But however, I'm um, yeah that's where we're at with it. So thank you very much for watching the video. Um, and everybody that's subscribed, if you haven't, as I say, if you can click the wee button, that'd be fantastic. Um, ideas for upcoming videos, there's going to be, I'll wait to go and record another couple of videos today, um, and I'm going to have them staggered for the rest of the week. And um, if you are new, as I say, sereraonabudget.com, that'll take you to the Serena website, you can do your sign up, you heard it at the beginning, you don't need to end at the end. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Serena on the Budget. and uh, yeah, feel free to drop me DMs, they're always open. And I'll be happy to help anybody uh, where I can. So thank you very much for your time, guys. I will speak to you all again soon. And uh, take care.